Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. This video is all about concentration. So we are gonna talk about molarity, molality, percent by volume, and percent by mass. Make sure you have your calculator. Let's get started. Solutions are generally comprised of two components. First, you have the solvent. Now, this is the majority of the solution. So in an aqueous solution, the solvent is water. Solutions also contain a solute. This is what is actually dissolved in the solvent. So if you have salt water, the solute is the salt. It is the solvent and the solute that makes a solution. So here is a simple illustration of making a solution. The solvent is the liquid here. The solute is whatever this cube is comprised of. So the solute starts to dissolve, it continues to dissolve, and then finally it is fully dissolved in the solvent. And what we have left here is a homogeneous mixture. If we assume that the solvent here is water and this is a sugar cube, then you have made a sugar solution. This describes what a solution is. And now let's measure it. The most common way we measure solutions is by using concentration. And there are many ways to measure concentration. We are going to start with molarity. Now the definition of molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. So consider this question. What is the molarity of a 2.5 liter solution that contains 0.3 moles of sodium chloride, which of course is table salt? Starting with my definition for molarity. Now I'm going to simply plug in what I know. I know that I have 0.3 moles of sodium chloride. That is my solute. I know my liters of solution. That's two and a half liters of solution. So my molarity is 0.12. Now when we're measuring in molarity, we will always use a capital M. This is like you put a G for grams or a kg for kilograms. It is important that it is capital as we will see later in this video. But let's do another problem. Calculate the molarity of a solution formed when 15 grams of ammonium chloride is dissolved in 50 milliliters of solution. This is much more common. When you are in the lab, you are going to be measuring solutes in grams, not in moles. And very often we don't need much solution, so 50 milliliters is a reasonable amount. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna convert this 15 grams of ammonium chloride into moles. So using my molar mass here, I get 0.28 moles of ammonium chloride. Now using my definition for molarity, I'm going to plug in what I know. I just calculated my moles of ammonium chloride and I simply convert my milliliters into liters. Now I have my molarity 5.61, again using the capital M to signify molarity. Let's do one more problem with molarity. How many milliliters of solution are required if you need 2.75 grams of calcium nitrate? The concentration of the solution is 0.1 molar. This is also a common scenario in a lab situation. The first thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to convert this 2.7 grams into moles. So using my molar mass, I get 0 0.0168 moles of calcium nitrate. Now I can go to my definition for molarity, plugging in what I know. This time what I know is not only my moles of solute, but also my concentration. I am going to solve for liters of solution. So solving for liters of solution, I get 0.168 liters. Of course, my problem asked me for milliliters, so a simple conversion there is 168 milliliters. Molarity is a great way to measure concentration, but it is not the only way. One problem with molarity is it does not take into account how the density of water changes with temperature. So this table here shows the density of water at various temperatures, and you can see it definitely varies. There are definitely situations that chemists and engineers come across where they need to be able to measure concentration very precisely which means they need a way to measure concentration that does not depend on the density of water changing. 
This concentration is called molality. The definition of molality is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. So it's not liters of solution, it's a mass and it's only the solvent. Let's work a problem. What is the molality of a solution if 0.015 moles of sodium nitrate is dissolved in 0.75 kilograms of water? Using my definition for molality, plugging in what I know. I know my moles of solute, in this case sodium nitrate, and I know my kilograms of solvent are 0.75. So my molality is 0 0.020 molality. You notice here, I use a small m for molality. So whether that m is capital or lowercase makes a big difference in how you're measuring that concentration. Let's do another problem. You need a solution of sodium carbonate with a molality of 1.05. How many grams should you add to 550 grams of water? Getting my definition for molality up, here we go. Let's plug in what I know. I know my concentration. I have 1.05 molality. I know my kilograms of solvent. In this case, my solvent is water. I have 0 0.550 kilograms. Notice I converted this grams to kilograms here. I can calculate my moles of sodium carbonate. So I have 0.578 moles of sodium carbonate. But my problem asked me for grams, so I need one more step. I simply need to convert my moles to grams. So here are my moles of sodium carbonate. Using my molar mass, I need 61.2 grams of sodium carbonate. Of course, molarity and molality are great at measuring concentration, but we will talk about one more way to measure concentration. Percent volume and percent mass are very commonly used for household products. So if you look at a bottle of vinegar, for example, you will see the concentration given in percent. So let's look at these definitions. Mass percent and volume percent are very similar. It just depends if you're doing a mass over a mass or a volume over a volume, but they're both percentages. Let's work a problem. Most isopropyl alcohol solutions are 70%, and that is a volume percent. If your bottle of isopropyl alcohol only has 35 milliliters left, how many milliliters of pure isopropyl alcohol do you have? Isopropyl alcohol is also known as rubbing alcohol, so you may very well have a bottle of this in your house right now. Because we are working with a volume percent, that is the equation we are going to use. Let's plug in what we know. We know the volume percent, it's 70%. We do not know the volume of pure isopropyl alcohol. Remember, that is going to be our solute. But we do know our volume of solution. We have 35 milliliters left, so we can put 35 in. We can calculate now our volume of pure alcohol. That is going to be 24.5 milliliters. When doing percentages, it's important to know that your units are going to match. So because I had milliliters here, I will have milliliters here. If I had converted my 35 milliliters to liters, I would have calculated liters of pure isopropyl alcohol. So you can choose whichever unit you want for these percentages, they just have to match up. Let's do a mass percent. What is the mass percent of a solution of hydrochloric acid if 15 grams of hydrochloric acid are added to 0.95 kilograms of water? Okay, so let's get our equation up for mass percent. Here we go. And let's plug in what we know. Our hydrochloric acid is our solute, our water is our solvent. So I know how many grams of solute, 15 grams. Be careful here, this is the mass of the solution. Remember, a solution is comprised of two parts, your solute and your solvent. So here is the mass of my solute, here is the mass of my solvent. I need to add them together. But I have a unit issue. I have grams and kilograms. I cannot add these together. I need to convert first. Again, it doesn't matter which way you convert, you just need your units to match. Because I already have grams up here in the numerator, I'm gonna convert these kilograms to grams. Here we go. So now I'm gonna add 15 grams to 950 grams. I get 965 grams of solution and a mass percent of 1.55. Any solution can be measured with these three concentrations. So let's work with all three concentrations together. 
Bleach is usually 51.5 grams of sodium hypochlorite dissolved in 1.15 kilograms of water to a final volume of 1.22 liters. Calculate the concentration of bleach in molarity, molality, and mass percent. I know for molarity and molality, I am going to need moles of my solute. In this case, it is my sodium hypochlorite. So let's first convert these grams into moles. So here are my 51.5 grams. Using my molar mass, I get 6.92 moles of sodium hypochlorite. You can start with any of these that you want, but I'm going to start with molarity. So here is my definition for molarity. Let's plug in what I know. I just calculated my moles of sodium hypochlorite. Do I have liters of solution? Yes, I have a final volume of 1.22 liters. Plugging that in my molarity is 0.567. Again, make sure you use the capital M to signify molarity. Let's now do molality. So here's my definition for molality, plugging in what I know. I have, of course, my moles of sodium hypochlorite. I do have my kilograms of solvent. It specifically said 1.15 kilograms of water. So plugging that in for my kilograms of solvent, I get a molality of 0 0.602. Again, make sure you use that little m for molality. Finally, let's do my mass percent, plugging in what I know. My mass of my solute, of course, is 51.5 grams of sodium hypochlorite. Careful with the mass of solution. It is going to be my solute plus my solvent. But just like before, I have grams and kilograms, so I need to convert. Here we go, I converted that kilograms to grams just because it'll match the grams in the numerator. Adding these together, I get a mass percent of 4.29%. The key to doing concentration problems is making sure you're keeping straight what is the solute, what is the solvent, and what is the solution. Most of the solutions around our house tend to be percent by volume or percent by mass, but they are there. See how many you can find this week. Thanks so much for watching.